Welcome to another video coverage of This Week in Rails. I'm Dave Kumira, and today Emmanuel is bringing us the updates, so let's dive right in. And the first item is the Rails Foundation. And the Rails Foundation is a group of people, and their total goal is to help improve the documentation, education, and marketing of the Rails framework. So I'm really excited to see what's going to come of this in the future. We already have the Ruby Central, which is doing great work over there. But I think anytime we are getting more investment into documentation, education, marketing, and event is only going to help the framework in the long run. And next, we had the raise on assignment to read only attributes, whereas before it would just silently not write to the database, but now we are going to get a raise or an error, so you know that something did not get persisted when you were expecting it to. And next, we have the unscoping of preload and eager load associations. And this one is pretty interesting. And I believe I actually came across this kind of issue not too long ago, where I basically had a query and it was preloading some data, but then I needed to run another query based on some conditions. And based on those conditions, it still had that preloaded data in there of the associated data. And so if you had that kind of situation, then now you're going to be able to unscope the eager load and preloads. And that is adding to the list of the ones that we could already do like where clauses, selects, and others. And next we had the add filtering of unencrypted attributes in inspect. And we already had the ability to filter these out from the logs. And now when you call inspect, we have the option to filter these out as well because we may not be wanting to necessarily work with these encrypted attributes at that point in time when we are researching something. However, we don't want them showing up in the log, so filtering those out as a default is a good thing. And then we got a bug fix to the encrypted attributes when using the first store create or first store initialize. And you would think that when you are passing in those parameters to do the initial record creation, you would expect that the encrypted values were initialized with the values provided, but instead the encrypted values were nil. And lastly, we have Stimulus Gets an Outlets API, and this one is really cool because I've been in this situation multiple times where I had to figure out some kind of workaround because I had a stimulus controller and it was updating some data, but then I needed it to update some data from another stimulus controller. And creating that bridge between the two was a pain, especially trying to call a different stimulus controller. And so, what this outlets API does is allow you to call another stimulus controllers element. And I'm really just excited to see what people are going to create with this one because it now opens up the door quite a bit for some other interactions on the client side without having to revert to some other kind of framework like React, Angular, or Vue. And so in the past week, there were 22 contributors to the Rails framework. So again, thank you for everyone who has contributed to help make Rails a better framework. And I really appreciate all the effort and time that you all have put into it. And if you'd like to receive your own email copy of This Week in Rails, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.in.rails to sign up for the newsletter. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.